Welcome to Winning Wednesdays, where we would be deep diving into our STARS process. I'm your school's success coach, Tanya, and let me, without further ado, take you to our presentation for today. We'll review the case study from our Thoughtful Tuesday segment, where May is in the eighth grade. She has a C average in school and few friendships. She would often share feeling lonely. At home, she would stay to herself. She says sharing feelings or hugs isn't something that happens at home. She likes math and would like to become a teacher. Now I'm going to show you three steps that we use to help a child like me. Step number one would be to listen intently for core beliefs. Now, when we say intently, just everyday conversations, whether she is in the car, she's at home, right? Or she's in school, listening to hear what she says, sense of helplessness, I can't do this, right? Sense of unlovability. You don't like me. You like my brothers more than me. You like my sisters more than me. You like my cousins more than me. My teacher likes everybody more than me. A sense of worthlessness. <clears throat> I'm not good enough. Right? You want to really listen closely to her inner conversation, which sometimes seeps out in either her saying something, drawing something, writing something, and you're able to follow up very gently, very cautiously, and very non-judgmentally. Keyword, non-judgmentally. Step two, break the negative feedback loop, right? So uh, a child like me having low self-esteem would often, you know, it often starts off with a trigger or a cue. Someone says something, someone, you know, just kids being kids, uh, eighth grade, the adolescent period, sometimes some mean things get said, right? Maybe someone said to me that she's ugly, right? That's the trigger. The negative thought train starts where me is attaching onto one of those core beliefs we discovered earlier, where she feels she's, she, nobody likes her. Let's look at the, the core belief, the negative core belief of being um, unworthy of love, not being loved. And so she starts to think, see, nobody ever liked me. And she goes from the negative events, being ugly, nobody liking me, to every single episode, negative episode in her life that, that proved that she wasn't liked, right? Every single episode will come like a train, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And then the self-fulfilling prophecy where she confirms she's right, nobody likes her. And she continues to withdraw, maintain just few friendships, but there's a feeling of loneliness ever present. How do we help her to break that negative feedback loop? We're going to have to, after, after observing it and bringing it to her attention, we are going to identify the same trigger. We're going to help her learn how to pause by testing that train before it starts. So for example, someone says to her, I don't like you. We ask me to pause and say, so what? So what if the person doesn't like her? So what? What's going to happen if this person does not like me? Does that mean that all of a sudden you may are an unlikable person or that because you know other things have you felt in the past that you're unlikable there are things that are likable about you i like you and i'm your coach or i like you i'm your mom or i like you i'm your dad right i like you me because of who you are and then we help me to just think about and test that train Find the times where she felt liked. Find the times where she just liked herself or she felt good about something she did for herself. Any distant memory. And if she could start holding on to that memory where she's able to successfully prove that she is indeed liked, 
we're going to start to break that negative feedback loop and retain the new belief that some people may not like me, and that's 100% true, but there are some people who find me very likable, and indeed, I like myself. Finally, how do we secure the new positive feedback loop? A lot of reinforcement, right? We build a new narrative of worthiness, of likability. Again, we look at Stephen Covey's, uh, Dr. Covey's values, loving, caring, kind. We call them superpowers, thoughtful, compassionate, respectful, tolerant, courteous. And May is going to identify and create her I am list. She's going to have an I am challenge where she's held accountable to memorize all of her I ams whether she's saying it day in, day out, I am loving, I am strong, right? Just about 10, not to overwhelm her, huh? just about 10 I ams. Find solid proof for each statement. So she has to actually, so she says, I am loving. She has to find solid proof, an example where she was indeed loving. For example, she might say, I helped my younger sister with her coloring and she felt so proud, right? I am loving. Finally, find new ways that the superpowers could help her overcome her personal feelings. Uh, for example, how could her ability to love help her to love herself and help herself to feel less lonely, right? When we start there with the self and we also engage with others, we're not Obviously, we're not living in isolation. We are living among others, with others, for others, and we're all connected. And so the more May is able to appreciate herself and what she brings and hold herself accountable to new things, the more she's also able to have that compassion and kindness toward others. This brings us to the end of Winning Wednesdays. We looked at the application of the stars that are retaining positives, reframing negatives. Keep in touch, uh, T. Lloyd at rlrgresilientstars.com. Look forward to seeing you next week where we would hop into Thoughtful Tuesdays. Bye for now.